So what we're going to do now is look at the concept of intelligence and look and see what the heck is this anyway. In today's society, a lot of people tend to think of intelligence as being something uh, involving either language skills, the reading and the writing, uh, the mathematical skills, um, the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, uh, what my relatives in Arkansas would call book learning. But it's possible that there may be other so types of intelligence besides that. The thing is that the types of intelligence we typically consider um, especially nowadays when we've got a whole lot of standardized testing in schools, we're looking at the skills that we can easily test by having kids come in and fill in bubbles with a number two pencil. Or in some cases nowadays, it may actually be uh, typing in or clicking on things on a computer screen. But just because those types of intelligence are fairly easy to measure doesn't necessarily mean that intelligence is limited to that. And so what I want you to do to start with now is look at other types of intelligence. So I want you to brainstorm. And what I want you to do is list as many different types of intelligence as you can think of. So if you're in a classroom, for example, uh, you would be uh, probably divide into small groups and each group create a list. If you're just by yourself, uh, get yourself a piece of paper and just write down a list of all the types of intelligence you can think of. Not just the book learning, although those are intelligence, but what are some other intelligences that you might have? So pause this video for a moment and then try to brainstorm a list of types of intelligence. Okay, I hope you now have a pretty good list of different areas in which people may have intelligence. Uh, some of these areas are the ones that can be tested by filling in bubbles with a number two pencil. Some can't. Um, what we're going to look at now is a theory called multiple intelligences. This is a theory that was developed by a psychologist named Howard Gardner. And he was looking at how children grow and develop and the different sorts of intelligence they might have. And so he noticed that some children may have the skills that, that get called intelligence all the time, uh, the book learning stuff, and other kids would have talents that aren't as easily tested by filling in bubbles with a number two pencil. Uh, you can't really test things like, for example, musical ability um, or athletic ability using a number two pencil and a sheet full of bubbles to fill in. So Gardner looked at these things and came up with actually nine different categories of intelligence. Uh, some are traditional and some are not. For example, there's the visual spatial intelligence. This is the type of intelligence um, where you're good at visualizing things, seeing things. Uh, when you're studying, you're going to work best if you have some kind of visual aid to show you things, uh, if you have a picture or a diagram. Uh, for example, if you're learning grammar, if this is the way your strength is, this is uh, a situation where diagramming sentences might work really well for you because you're conceptualizing things based on seeing a picture of things and diagramming a sentence is drawing a picture of how the different pieces of the sentence relate to each other. Um, another type of learning is the verbal linguistic. This is one of the standard types of intelligence that is tested by the filling in the bubble. Uh, this is how well you read, how well you write, um, how well you absorb things in word form, either by reading 
or by hearing a lecture or things like that. So if this is where your strengths are, a lot of the traditional methods of studying are going to work for you, the, the basic reading in the book and things like that. Uh, another one of the more traditional intelligences is the mathematical or logical. If you have this strength, you probably do like to analyze things, uh, boil them down to formulas uh, where you can just fill in the variables and get your answer. Uh, you may have good logical reasoning skills where you can follow point from point to point uh, in terms of things like solving um, a proof in geometry, things like that. So the mathematical is again one of the more standard types of intelligence we look at. Uh, then there's the bodily and kinesthetic. This has to do with physical motion and action and things like that. Uh, so for example, if you're talking about an athlete, um, you may be talking about the skills of the bodily and kinesthetic skills. Uh, for example, I happen to enjoy watching football and I'll see a running back and he's just really brilliant on the field. He always knows what direction to duck so that the guys who are trying to tackle him miss him or he's able to jump over them. And I think that's a really, really uh, brilliant player. He's a genius on the field. He may not be a genius in terms of the mathematical or the verbal linguistic skills, uh, but on the playing field, he has his strength, his body knowledge, of as, and things like that. And by the way, this is not just big muscular motions. This is also the little old lady in church who can't pay attention to the sermon unless she's knitting. Uh, and again, once her fingers are busy with the knitting, then she can pay attention to the sermon. I know my grandmother was that way. Uh, she had her crochet bag with her at all times. So if you test out as strong on the bodily kinesthetic things, you're not going to do well studying when you're trying to sit still. Uh, you're going to want to get up and walk around some while you're studying. Maybe even study while walking around, if you can do that without running into things or if you need to keep your fingers busy to pay attention in class. Uh, find something that you can twiddle with, um, ideally not something that makes an annoying noise that uh, irritates all the people around you, but something to keep yourself a little bit busy so that you can then concentrate on what you're trying to do. Then we have the musical rhythmic. Uh, intelligence, uh, where you're into uh, s melodies and music, or you're into rhymes and poetry and things like that. And so if you tested highly in this particular level, what you want to do then is you want to find study methods that use things like the musical sounds or the rhythmic sounds. You're going to do well with some of the grammar rules and spelling rules, you know, the I before E except after C and an a, uh, words that sound A as in neighbor and way. You remember those rhyming things. So rhyming things and little mnemonics like that are things that are going to help you to remember and study things. And I have a really interesting example of how this musical and rhythmic skill uh, comes into play. Uh, one time some years ago, my husband and I were out uh, in California and we'd been sailing. And as we were coming into the dock, uh, my husband tripped, fell off the boat, bounced off a pier on his way into the water, shattered his wrist, uh, and we spent the next seven hours in the emergency room in Marina del Rey. And so while I was sitting out in the waiting room, there was a kid in there, uh, his brother had had a bicycle crash or something, and so he was in the waiting room doing his homework. And the radio was on, and it was playing, um, some uh, jazz music. And this kid was doing his algebra homework and he was rapping it in rhythm to the music on the radio. And so it was like uh, x squared minus 2x plus 3 equals. And he was rhythmic to the tone of the music, to the beat of the music, and he was getting it right. So one thing maybe for you, if, uh, if you're a rhythmic sort, 
uh, maybe try wrapping your algebra homework and see if that helps you to, to uh, uh, master it better.